G'day, Ben from Duck Plain Chicken here with a new build series. And this is something a little bit different for me, so I've not seen the anime or manga, red manga for this uh, particular series, but this uh, mobile suit holds a special place in my heart, which I'll talk about a little bit in a minute. This is the 148 scale SPTLZ00X Lasner from Bandai. Now, the reason that this is so dear to my heart is because back in the mid 80s, and I reckon it probably was 1985 or 1986, I built the 1100 scale of this uh, particular mobile suit. Um, and I have it here. So this is an example of how far, first of all, the technology's come. And secondly, just why it's important to hang on to models that you do. So keep in mind, I painted this in 1985, 1986. Would have been around that time. So we're talking, you know, a good 35, 37 years ago. Now, the colours are completely wrong. And the reason for that was because I painted these in Humbrol enamels. The uh, Those of you who are of my vintage will remember they come in, came in little tins. And this is brush painted. So I didn't have a lot of colors to choose from. So I sort of used my imagination a bit and painted it up in these colors. Now you can see that there's plenty of seams that I haven't, you know, I didn't deal with uh, when I painted this up. That was sort of not really the thing back then. You know, certainly not to the level of detail you do now. But the kit itself was actually pretty good. So this is one 100 scale, and uh, I've hung on to it all these years because it was, it's the first mech that I ever built. So uh, I'm kind of glad I hung on to it because I've come a long way since then. And this is a, I mean, this is a typical kit of its vintage, you know, limited articulation, uh, loose joints, um, lots of seams, you know, things in halves, but, um, yeah, it was, you know, of its time. And that's why when I saw the 148 scale one come from Bandai, uh, and I believe that original 1100 was probably Bandai as well, but when I saw the 148 scale, I thought I had to build it and try to get the colors uh, closer than, than what I did 30 odd years ago. Now, just a quick look, sort of going through the instructions, and then I'll sort of talk about some of the runners. But you can see, you know, something like the body unit, for example, is, uh, let's see, two, three, four, five steps. So it's not as complex as like a, a master grade. And same with the arms. There's only sort of a few steps for, uh, for each of the arms. So I don't think this is going to be a particularly complex build. But, you know, like, of course, typical Bandai, they give you, you know, color guide. Um, I think I'm going to have fun trying to mix some of these colors. I'm not sure if I'm going to go with the exact same scheme. But it's got quite a few gimmicks. So once I build it up, I can sort of show those off. Comes with a couple of figures. And of course, this being 148 scale, it is, um, you know, it's not the same scale as a, a master grade uh, Gundam. So let's have a look at some of the runners that you get. Now, as far as the sort of frame bits, frame parts you do get, they are uh, in gray and Typical Bandai fashion, you know, lots of detail, really well engineered, and of course, you know, zero flash, as you would expect. So there's a number of these sort of grey, uh, grey runners. Obviously the body there. I don't know if they're parts of the legs or what. I mean, yeah, I haven't built this kit yet, so I'm not, not quite sure. But you get sort of three gray runners and I should say the box is quite sizable uh, it's you know it's quite a, a hefty box so there's quite a few sprues in it and then when we start looking at the armor we've got multi-colored sprues you know or different color sprues I should say so I've got white here you can see for the top of the legs for the wing details and the helmet for the head we get a couple of sprues in this uh, lilac color light purple so sort of see a few a uh, few details there uh, here's another one obviously part of the uh, 
I think these are the side skirts, uh, sides of the legs they are, and bits of the hip. So, then we get a sort of a couple of bright blue runners. So, like uh, like Gunpla kit, the colour separation's fantastic. I don't think, you know, I think this will be a nice change for me from doing uh, masking of those Valkyries that I've worked on previously. So I think this should be sort of reasonably straightforward. There might be a little bit of masking, but I don't think it's going to be uh, too major. And then we have uh, like a dark blue, again, sort of accents on what looks like the weapon, maybe a couple of bits of armor. So color separation is quite substantial. You do get uh, poly caps. So I assume that most of the joints will be built on sort of using poly caps. You get a couple of uh, figures, which is nice. You get sort of these two standing figures and then you get the seated figure. And what I like about these, because they are sort of 148 scale, I think uh, they're going to be substantially easier to paint and provide a little bit more detail than the uh, normal 1100 scale that I paint for uh, Gunpla. Uh, we get a couple of like hose details, and this is sort of a rubbery, uh, rubbery plastic. And this kind of stuff always worries me when it comes to painting because of course as soon as you flex it the paint will crack so I think I may end up just using these as they are and not even attempt to sort of paint them um, I might trial a little bit of a uh, panel line wash I'll just trial it on the the plastic before I put it on the pieces just to make sure it doesn't dissolve it or have any adverse effects got a few red accent details which is nice And then finally some more white pieces. So obviously the, the hands and a few other bits and pieces. There are clear parts that come in this kit. So you get green for the canopy. There's actually a couple of other smaller pieces as well. I'm gonna keep these in the bag until, uh, until I'm ready for them, just to sort of prevent them from getting scratched up. And as far as stickers and stuff goes, it's kind of interesting. They've got these stickers which are on a sort of glossy film, but then the stickers themselves are kind of matte. But these, uh, based on a quick look in the instructions, I think these are used for the canopy, which is nice. If you're not planning on painting this kit, it's good they've actually included that detail to sort of do the frames around the canopy, give it that... Uh, little bit of extra bit of detail which is nice but of course I'll be painting mine you also get some foil stickers for the eyes and you get a whole lot of warning uh, stickers and unfortunately these are stickers these are not water slide decals so that's a bit of a miss now it's not too much of an issue for me because I have a lot of third-party um, sort of warning water slide decals so that I'll be trying to find something that's close to it and I'll be using those now why it's interesting is because they do actually include some water slide decals. So I don't know why Bandai hasn't sort of gone, you know, um, just extended this sheet with a few more warnings and what have you, but I guess it is what it is. What is nice is you get decals for the cockpit, so you can get quite a bit of detail in there. And I assume these are sort of symbols that are obviously important to the, uh, to the suit. So it's good that we've got some water slide decals. So it just would have been nice if uh, Bandai had sort of put these warning stickers and you know, made them water slides. But that's all right. Some are better than none. So that's essentially everything that's in the box. Um, I will be using the SMS lacquer acrylics to paint this, and I. I'm hoping it should be a fairly straightforward uh, straightforward build. I don't think there's going to be too many issues here, with any luck. Famous last words. I won't be lighting this kit, so this kit will, won't be um, lit, and I also won't be weathering it, because I think at this scale, usually for me, 135th, that's where I get into uh, weathering. So anything that's, you know, at a scale yeah, beyond 135th, I don't tend to bother with weathering too much. So, 
So the next step for me is to cut off all these pieces of the sprue, clean them all up, and then get sort of a bit of an assembly together of it so that we can have a look at it. I can show off some of the gimmicks before I start painting. So that'll be, uh, that'll be next. Before I start painting the Lesnar, I thought it would be a, a good idea to sort of show you some of the features of the kit and also talk about its size and uh, just a, the general way it goes together. So first of all, it's a little bit bigger than I thought it would be. So it stands at about eight inches high from bottom of the feet to the top of the, the head or about 20 and a half centimeters. So it's actually a little bit bigger than your sort of standard um, master grade uh, master, uh, master grade kit. And as far as the build, uh, the build quality of it, I mean, it's a Bandai kit. It goes together seamlessly without any, you know, any issues. And it builds sort of somewhere between a master grade and a high grade kit. So it has sort of a partial inner frame in some areas, certainly in the sort of chest area, but nowhere near the sort of detail of a, um, a master grade. But it has a reasonable amount of articulation. It has, you know, sort of master grade like hands and manipulators. And so, yeah, it's, it's a very easy kit to put together. There's nothing sort of too complex. The only thing I would say is that there's probably a bit of an overuse of undergating. Uh, undergating of course is where the uh, where the piece attaches to the sprue you can cut it off without leaving a blemish on the piece where it's going to be seen so undergates are really good for clear pieces so it was good to see undergates on those but for a lot of the plastic the other plastic bits I think it was a bit unnecessary so just be aware of that that you need to do a little bit more cleanup on undergated um, uh, nubs and, or otherwise the pieces won't fit together. As far as gimmicks on this kit and articulation, um, there's nothing sort of out of the ordinary here. Um, it has a few little sort of flaps that open up like here on the, the shoulder, um, on the forearm. And I mean, there's not, there's a little bit of detail in there. It's sort of a bit hard to see on screen, but it's, it's pretty limited. Uh, there's these vents on the chest that sort of open and close. Nothing sort of really amazing there. The legs you have uh, sort of these flaps and that's as far as they open. So there's a little bit of detail underneath and on the inside of the legs as well. So the other thing is the, um, the knuckle dusters, they swing in front of the, the fist and then they, they sort of pull back. Uh, I'm going to just remove the gun so the gun actually sort of clips onto the the backpack and it's a little bit fiddly there we go so that'll just get that out of the way so the cockpit opens and there is a, a nice amount of detail in the cockpit and there's decals that come with that water slide decals so we'll be able to um, set that up beautifully. The figure that it comes with is a little bit odd in that it comes in sort of two pieces but uh, you know there's a reasonable amount of detail there. Uh, of course that closes up and you as far as extra pieces in the kit that you get the only real apart from a few extra uh, poly caps that you don't use you get an option for the pilot seat so you get an option with or without the seat belt. So that's sort of really the only optional piece that you get. So that'll be going to my bits bin that I can probably use for something else. The jetpack has some articulation. These uh, fins here, they're on uh, ball joints so they can sort of rotate independently. And the backpack sort of comes off. So it's like a little socket where this goes into and just slides down. As you can see the colour separation on the kit is uh, typical Bandai, you know, really well done. I don't think there'll be much need for um, a lot of masking. 
And as far as colors go, I think I'll be sticking pretty much to the, uh, you know, to the indication of the kit here with the dark blue, white. I'll probably do some sort of metallic for the gray areas and uh, uh, then this light purple or violet color. So I might have to mix up a couple of special mixes. The next step for me is to um, uh, pull all this apart, put all the pieces on, um, on clips ready for priming and painting. I've started painting the pieces and basically I primed everything first. For the darker colors, I used SMS of the black. So that's for sort of the, the dark metallic and also for the, the blue. For the white pieces, instead of using white primer, I actually use grey and the reason for that is because I find it a lot easier putting the grey primer down and then seeing where you've been once you actually paint the white over the top. So I tend to use a grey primer when I'm painting really uh, light colours like white. For the red pieces, I did prime in white just because um, red tends to be quite transparent so having the white behind it makes a big difference. I haven't finished painting all the pieces yet so the sort of light purple areas and the very dark blue that's sort of on the feet I haven't actually painted yet. So there are a lot of pieces in this kit and so I only have a limited number of sort of stands and clips that I can put pieces on uh, so that sort of limits how much I can do it at any given time. So talk about the colors I've used so far for the red pieces. I have used SMS RAF Red and RAF is for the Royal Australian Air Force and for the metallic pieces so for inside uh, the engines here and also for the frame parts I used SMS metallic steel and I should say this is probably a good time to point out for uh, engine bells like this you don't actually need to mask the inside of them in any way so what I did was I sprayed the metallic first and then I just painted the red by pointing the airbrush sort of away from the opening and that way it gives you a nice nice clean edge around the um, around the bottom of the bell there but you don't need to mask it off so red, uh, the SMS metallic steel for the sort of frame parts. Now for the blue, I'm using, and this is a bit hard to read, I'm sorry, it's, it's actually PN blue. A little focus, you can hardly see there because the <laughs> had a bit of an accident. Uh, this is probably not as bright as what the kit probably should be. It will lighten up a little bit once I put a flat coat on it, but um, I don't mind if it goes a little bit darker. I'm not looking for sort of screen accuracy. I just want to get it close, but um, I tend to, for this particular kit, I don't mind if the colors are a bit darker than what they're supposed to be. Uh, for the white areas, I used Miss White. Now because it is over a grey primer, there is sort of slight variation in areas. It's not sort of blistering bright white. And so I'm actually pretty happy with the way that's, that's come up. There are also areas on this kit where I want to do sort of further colour separation. The way the bits are organised, they've got really good colour separation. There's not a lot of masking to do in this kit at all. But there are some areas where I, where I will have to. So for example, here, this goes on the, uh, the side of the leg and there's actually a flap that sort of opens up. So what I wanna do is paint inside here. I'm just gonna use the metallic steel. So there's a few pieces. This uh, piece on the shoulder, similar sort of situation. You've got a flap that sort of folds up uh, and to expose this little detail in here. So I'll paint that 
steel as well. You're hardly going to see it. The flaps actually don't open up very far at all, but still I just want to give a bit of an indication that there's uh, something different going on under there. And also for the white pieces, there are, there are a number of areas where uh, I wouldn't mind actually giving it just a little bit more variation. Uh, so this triangular piece in here, I'm actually going to paint that, mask it off and paint it barley grey, just to give it, you know, a hint of something else sort of going on underneath. Um, but that's essentially where I'm up to with the painting so far. So I'll go ahead and mask these pieces off and it's just nothing special. I've just used to me a tape to mask it off and then go in and, and uh, spray with the metallic steel. Some of the other colours I'm using, and I'll start with the light purple, the lilac colour. I don't have a paint that is uh, close to that colour, so I've had to mix my own. So what I used was predominantly probably about, I don't know, 80% of SMS white, about 15% violet, and then I added about 5% of PN blue. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I wanted it to tie in a little bit to the the dark blue because uh, I've used the pin blue for that. Um, so this is what I've come up with. And as you can see, it is different. Uh, it will lighten up a little bit with a uh, matte coat over it. It's slightly different. I still get that color variation there between the armor pieces. But it's a little bit different. And I will be using uh, SMS white, surface of white as the primer. There are a number of other sort of little detail areas like in the cockpit for example is this uh, green colour. They show that the control panel here at the top of that which is the top of the uh, helmet is green. Now I've actually left that white but I will put, I will do the parts of the chair and the surrounds in green. So for that I'll just be using SMS green. And for the, uh, oh, and I should say the green I'll be doing over a, a white primer as well. For the yellow, I'm actually using a custom mix I used in a uh, project I did a while ago. What I tend to do is if I've got like a little bit of paint mixed, you know, a custom mix sitting in a bottle, I try to use it up in another project if I can, you know, just so I'm not wasting it. Uh, you can see there's only sort of a little bit in there, so I'll use it. The chair is the only yellow on this kit that I'll be uh, sort of using, so I might as well use that up there. So it's a, and that's just made up of SMS yellow and a few drops of SMS red just to warm up that yellow. Now there are these sort of darker blue areas for the feet and also on the weapon as well. So um, what I'll be doing is I'll be using Blue Angels Blue. So still needs a good mix, but um, it'll be a, a bit of a nice contrast between the, uh, the P and blue, and so it's just a bit darker. Um, and so I'll be doing that over a uh, over a black primer. All the pieces have had a good gloss coat put over them, ready for panel lining. So for the panel lining of the different colours. <coughs> I'm going to be predominantly using uh, panel line accent color black and gray. So I'm going to use gray on the white and light gray pieces and then I'll pretty much use black on everything else. You would have seen me do this before, this isn't anything sort of new. Basically give the accent color a really good shake. Then it's a matter of just touching the panel liner to the panel line and capillary action should do all the rest. There we go. And again, it doesn't matter if you make a bit of a mess because you can always clean it up later.
And for the darker color pieces, we'll use the black. Again, give it a good stir, good shake. Now in a case where we've got this sort of uh, grid pattern or whatever, I'll actually flood it with the panel liner so then when I go through with the cleaner, it will sort of highlight all the top edges. So normally I sort of say, oh, try to minimize the amount that you have to clean up, but in this case, it's not going to matter that much. I'm also conscious of the fact that there's some lines in there, some panel lines that are going to be really difficult to sort of clean out. So I might actually just skip them. Um, this particular part of the kit is not even going to be seen that much. Because there's a, there's a door that sort of goes over this. And it does lift up, but not very far. So. A lot of this is not even going to be seen. So I'm just looking at adding the panel liner where I can actually clean, go in and clean this up later on. Here's another case of a detail that's uh, probably never going to be seen so I don't know if I'll actually worry about panel lining it. Um, this is the door that goes onto this piece and it doesn't lift up very far at all so I think it's going to be it's not even going to be worth detailing underneath. Time to do some panel line cleanup and there you can see where I've used the panel line wash and sort of dabbed it in, left a mark there, so I need to go back and clean that up. There's a couple of other sort of messy spots in here. For those of you who are familiar with my previous videos, you'll know that I use shellite. So you can use Zippo fluid, you can use shellite, you can use enamel thinner. It's just something that helps to clean up that uh, panel line wash. So I've just decanted it into a smaller bottle, makes it a bit easier to work with. I'll get a cotton bud, dunk it, wipe off all the excess. Let's see if we can pick an area where it's quite obvious. And then I just sort of brush it over. And you can see it just comes straight off. I'm not using any, you know, hard pressure or scrubbing or anything like that I'm just letting the shellite do its work and where you've got you know panel lines you want to go across across the panel line and it helps clean up any of those sort of marks where you've applied the wash. Now I've used to me a panel line accent color and normally I sort of only wait half an hour before I do the cleanup. In this case I've actually left it um, 12 hours so overnight and it still cleans up just fine so so that's my process for removing or cleaning up the panel lines making everything a bit neater it's not rocket science and it's the same process I normally use but just to show that I'm doing the same thing so once I've gone through and cleaned up all those panel lines I can then move on to the decals which will be in the next video so do all that panel line cleanup so until then I'll catch you later.